is James. So, and who are you? I'm James Kuhn. I was a former student of Jamin McMillan in the uh, five-year spatial dynamics training at Spatial Dynamics Institute. Um, I've known him for about a little over six years now. And uh, I just want to say his work has been a profound influence upon you know, our developing awareness. I know of myself and many others. Also in how we work, how we relate to ourselves, uh, how we choose to live in our bodies and how we relate to others in theirs, all the way through into our use of language, its gestures and effects upon others. His work is effective. Without further ado, Jamin McMillan. And we will pause the uh, video for this part. The recording. Uh, um, we were looking at as we began this journey, and I would just say Mila is with um, the World Social Initiative Forum with um, Joan Slee and Juan, Nicole, and um, I think I might be missing one, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, what I know about Mila is she loves Ida Wegman. Uh, that's what really, I think, kind of bound us together a little bit. And uh, when I told her, listen, we're going to do a third annual, she's like, oh my God, I'm in Ascona. I'm going to Ascona tomorrow. And then um, I said, would you like to co-lead this? And she's like, absolutely. And I was like, oh, well, will you play cello? She said, absolutely. So uh, without further ado, um, I, I invite Mila Cowork to come and share um, the questions and the thoughts that have been living with her in relationship to where we are in the world today. Thank you. Thank you, Dadi. I am very excited to be able to share some things today about my connection to Ita Wegmann. And um, I not only come from the World Social Initiative Forum, but also from the board of the Swiss Anthroposophical Society, um, which also Peter Selk is part of. And um, just this morning, I went with my mom to the Itza Wegmann archive, and I spent um, some minutes in her bedroom where she also died. And yeah, it was a really, really wonderful to be able to go to her Holtz house um, in Arlesheim. Yeah, and uh, think of her on her birthday. And I've also just come back last week from Ascona, uh, from the Casa Andrea Cristoforo that she founded and where she spent the last three years of her life. And um, it was not my first time there. It's a curative house. Um, and out of the time I've also the last time two years ago, recovering from a pneumonia, I studied her life and um, got a lot of inspiration for my work in the Anthroposophical Society. And um, what has been so inspiring for me is this, this will to heal and these questions about life um, in connection with freedom and love. And um, from my first visit in Ascona, there came a strong question about the anthroposophical branches in connection with this question of life and the form. And um, when I was reading Peter Selk's book, uh, The Last Three Years, there is a, a part where it said what Ita Weichmann has had planned for um, the time after the war that she already saw, saw coming, which sadly she didn't experience anymore as she died in 43. Um, her plan was to go to all the countries, it is said, and bring a new way of anthroposophy. And how it is said in German, it's, I translate it as heart-centered anthroposophy. And um, this has really inspired me for my work and this question of the, the life 
in, in the anthroposophical branches and in the society in the School of Spiritual Science have been um, a big part of my, my work in the society in the last years. And Isa Wechmann's courage to heal has really, yeah, and this moving, always moving forward um, has really inspired me in my work. And when Dottie asked me to, to speak about something of Itze Wechmann, we, we came to this topic that is kind of the topic also for, for our meeting today, this question of neutrality and what does it mean um, for our time. And I have been kind of watching the last, um, yeah, the last years and seeing how through different crisis situations in the world, for example, starting with the refugee crisis and movement, then the climate crisis, then everything that we experienced in the last years leading up to the COVID situations, I've witnessed more and more deep splits in our society and um, splits in that run even through the anthroposophical society, run through families and circle of friends, um, splits of opinions, movements, and over the years, I've experienced that, that they have grown much stronger. Um, so that friendships break apart, families um, don't, can't agree anymore um, on things. And I've often found myself in the middle of, of these kind of questions. And um, I could often not make up my mind to which opinion or which side I should say yes to. And I was kind of feeling I have to say yes to, to one opinion or one side. But I found myself seeing truth in often in both sides, but seeing that they were going to an extreme where it's not anymore in the service of, of humanity or yeah, where, where I feel the small part of the truth is kind of corrupted and going into a, a destructive extreme. And um, I felt deeply that I can't do my work in the world and in the anthroposophical society if I go in one or the other direction. And I think you all know this from your life, um, that there are always kind of two streams that you're confronted with. Maybe there are also more. Um, and I felt like if I look also too much into the abyss and into the darkness, and if I try to fight the, the darkness or the evil, I don't do my work out of a free will and out of a space of love. And that I really had to create or work out of a different space to, yeah, to make, to transform something that will have a good outcome for the world. And Ita Wechmann has always been an inspiration for me in this, in this work. Um, and we can maybe start with the, with the quotes that also Dottie posted in the, in the invitation. I will read it now. That concerns this question of neutrality that I want to speak a bit about. So I'll read the quote now. Remain as neutral as possible, not out of opportunism, but out of love for humanity. Those who are neutral in the most genuine way will comprise the third army, which has the spirit as its weapon and unites with the dead whose souls have been awakened and who are being led by Michael in the supersensory world. The fight should only be spiritual. The spirit against the unspirit. I don't know if this is a real English word, but I translated it from German in that way. 
so that the living Christ can enter again, not only in the hearts of the people, but also as earth ruler, as world ruler. Michael's army and leadership must become a reality. So what, what does it mean to be neutral? It's something that I think is, is kind of, maybe for, for everybody this is very normal, but for me, this, this is really something very special that I, I wouldn't have thought um, to call it neutral. I would have maybe called it balance or, or something else, but there must be a reason why she calls it neutral. And we can see that neutral in her life doesn't mean withdrawing or ignoring what was going on in the world. She was deeply aware of what was going on, especially um, coming towards the Second World War. And um, she saw the, the destructive forces coming from Germany and she did her best to save um, children with special needs and um, Jewish co-workers and children um, from, yeah, from these forces and bring them to Switzerland or into other places. And she was in, in contact with the authorities to make all that happen. But from, I never feel that it comes out of a space of fighting against what is happening but that she really always managed to come out of a space of freedom. And she didn't fight this, this hate or the destruction with, with the same means. And she always worked out of this courage to heal. And um, this image of working out of the future. And she she was someone that fought for, for her patients where others had already given up and she stayed with them until the end. So you would probably think, but this is not neutral. She, she engages in, in, in the world history and um, she, she stays and fights un, until the end. And um, But she didn't fight what, what came towards her. And this is really amazing considering what happened to her 30, uh, 34, 35, being expelled basically from, from the Goetheanum and her task in the executive board. But she never fought or tried to to um, work against the people that wronged her. She managed to hold the balance in herself and to be mindful. And in German, this is a wonderful word. It's Geistesgegenwärtig, um, spirit presence, presencing. Maybe mindful is, is uh, is a good uh, way also to describe it. Um, she was mindful to what wanted to come out of the future and out of the spiritual world. And she always worked out of the positive, not against the negative. And when I find myself now being inspired by her work so deeply in the last years, and when I find myself in, in moments of discussions or reading very um, different articles about a situation. The question that has helped me um, in regards to this, um, to this neutrality, does this movement or comment or whatever it is in this moment, does it come out of a, a space of love for humanity and does it work towards union and love and freedom in the world? Or actually does it work towards more separation and creating more fear? 
And I realized this has become kind of um, a compass in myself, how to engage with, with strong polarities. And um, the other question that has become, or um, another image that when I do something or I bring an impulse to the world, do I bring it as, as an answer to something that agitates me or makes me afraid? Or do I manage to actually have a calm heart and a, a calm mind and create something out of this space. And um, for me, this calm heart and mind are a, a very good picture for what it can mean to be neutral. One can receive, perceive everything that is happening around, um, but one is not completely dragged into one or the other side. Again, I don't mean not being touched by what is happening. And the admirable thing about Itza Wechmann also after 35, 1935, um, was that she really tried not to be concerned with the people who didn't want to work with her, but she looked at who wanted to work with her and she worked with them. So again, working out of, of the positive. So can we also focus our attention on what is growing and with whom we can shape something together instead of trying to work against something that we see as wrong or bad or destructive. And in my eyes, or also looking at Itza Wechmann's life, neutrality doesn't mean not taking decisions or standing up for something or fighting for something or just being neutral for the sake of being neutral. It means for me really cultivating a space of freedom in ourselves in which the impulses of the future or for the future may arise. And I think we're often in our world just shown like two options also in the media, it's either you're on this side or, you, or you're on that side. But maybe there is also a third option. And can we learn to listen and see this third option? And for me, this third option is often the kind of soft voice of our hearts that can lead us in, in a direction that is not either or. And what can we do to cultivate this space? Or what, what do we need to do to be able to also listen to that more? And I guess everybody has his, her own, or her own practice with that. And we will go later into breakout rooms to discuss this question. And for me, it's the, the topic that Dottie and I also spoke about um, a precondition to hold balance and be neutral is a deep self-knowledge. To know also in myself if I'm out of which space I'm working. And um, to be also aware of, of the temptations that want to drag us to one or the other side. And um, deep self-knowledge, considering also um, a lot of young people, a lot of my friends, I see it often is seen as being quite harsh with oneself and being very, yeah, self-judgmental. <laughs> I don't know if self-judging um, but it's also there to hold a balance. And this was so wonderful when, when Dottie and I spoke some, I think two weeks ago when I was still in Ascona, that we, we see that in our Christian belief, 
we're taught and we hear very clearly that we should love our neighbor or love the other and give to the other. And we take that quite seriously, but we always forget this little as yourself. And so again, there is also a, a question of balance. Can I have self-knowledge out of a balanced space in myself that is not ignoring things that need to be worked on or are self-destructive. And um, to end, because I want to give you enough time to also speak in the breakout room, I want to put another quote of Itza Wegman in the center that she wrote to a patient in Sweden. And she said, you have to wait patiently to see how things will turn out and also keep away from sympathies or antipathies for this or that group because the world has to be healed of all the hatred that is floating around everywhere. Neutrality but true, true neutrality towards all is the first principle of the right understanding of Christianity. As anthroposophists, we must awaken such thoughts and feelings of healing in us so that a beginning can be made somewhere. So the question for the breakout rooms, I think, Frank, um, you will you will help us with that. I thought of that you can go into groups of four and I guess we have about 10 minutes that you can work or share on this question and then we come back and I hope there is still time that we can exchange a bit in the group because it would be nice to hear some of your voices um, that it's not just for you to listen um, but you can also contribute. So the question is, what does neutrality mean for you in your life? And how do you personally cultivate it? I will put the question and um, also the quote in, in the chat. And I want to end my small and short presentation with another quote by Ita Wechmann to Leslie McMichael in England and with a meditation that has helped me immensely in the last years to cultivate this space of inner, inner freedom and balance in my work. So first, Ita Wechmann. Whatever comes, we must go forward with wisdom and courage to be ready to build the future so that the brotherhood of man with equality and freedom may be understood and can and come into being through the teachings of Rudolf Steiner. A letter to Leslie McMichael, who was in England on the 27th of January, 1940. And I will end my presentation before you go into the breakout rooms with a meditation that I didn't find in English, so I had to make a translation with my friend in Ireland, David Fairclough. I think he's also here. And um, I will put the German and the English in, in the chat later, but for now I will just read the English version. Christ. Who you shines in my thinking. Christ, you who lives in my feeling. Christ, you who works in my willing. Illumine me from my head to my heart. Weave in me from my heart to my limbs. Radiate from my limbs into the world that I may behold your loving being of light. Learn to live in your sacrificial will as it lives and works in humanity's becoming. 
And so I feel a part of your being. And so fully imbued by your stream of love, not I, the Christ wills in me. Okay, maybe we just, uh, maybe we lost some people. But we have about five minutes. Um, if some of you want to share a bit about um, your very short conversation, um, about your practices <clears throat> or your thoughts on, on this topic in our very special time at the moment. I would share that even though it was a very short conversation, it was very rich, uh, a tribute to how much has been unlocked, Milena. It preoccupied. Whoops, okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll keep going, that was just, it was just technical overlay. He was talking to the last conversation. Please continue. Well, I was pretty much finished, Frank. It was a rich conversation tribute to how much was unlocked with what Milena and Michaela and Jamin have brought today and how much you who prepared it brought in the introductory emails. Thank you. I would like to say something. I would like to say that this question of neutrality is hugely important at this time for me personally. And I wonder if there's any more we can work on with this through, through with you. Yeah, we can, we can think about that with with Dottie and Frank. Somehow I seem to have found my way into this bre breakout room and not the main room because our breakout room was suddenly closed. Um, so I don't know how I found myself here, but here I am. This is the main room. This is Welcome the main back. room. Yeah, you're nice. in the right place. Okay, fine. Hi. So we're just a really big breakout room. You're a really big <laughs> Very intimate. Room. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're Hi, just Barbara. Here about playing, about uh, continuing this, for those of you know the glass bead game or whatnot, just from what has been uncovered here, you know, is research for me for a year. I mean, I'm inspired to go back and review the lectures, the one between priests and, and physicians, the medical lectures, the karma lectures, all of that come right back to the, the very essence of what you know, is being brought here. And then the gesture of healing, that we take that out into the world as we relate to the world through our arts, because all art is healing. And, but to embody it and then forget it and then live it. So I feel that, you know, from this short connection, there is a lot to take. Thank you. Do we just share when we want to share or should we wait to be called on? Go for sure. it. Okay. I, I, I'm raising my hand, so just, it was my <laughs> turn. <laughs> I, you know, it was really nice to hear you speak because um, I'm just having so much antipathy. And I was like, oh, I'm going to learn how to make everybody else neutral to my desires in this, in this COVID times. Oh my gosh, stop putting masks on little kids. Asna, you stop it, and you stop it, and you stop it, and you stop it. And I realized that I have to be the change in the world <laughs> and be neutral in myself a little bit. And it's just this whole, just what's been happening in the world has just been heartbreaking. And I, I shared in my group, I feel like, I married Anthroposophy and I married this school and all these people that I thought we were all on the same wavelength are set, are turning to materialism and I, I need to like be neutral. That's my work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charlene. 
Yeah. Dottie had had that quote, that about Ida's own uh, quote about having patience, and uh, I'm sorry, I need that. I need that in me. and quell my own anxiety and quell my own astrality. Just, just I don't know who spoke just now, but just as you are speaking, I feel that too. But I've got to quiet that in myself with patience. I'm ready to sign up for a massage school. My question, I'm trying to find it. I think it's in the quote. What is the German word for neutrality? Because I kind of feel, and the Kate, um, Melina did help that picture of neutrality, I think. I, I think it's a picture that we're trying to create in our imagination. And then that leads to inspiration and that leads to intuition, right? But just that picture of what neutrality really is. I mean, yeah. In, in German, it's neutral. It's very similar. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Natural <laughs> something. Yeah, neutral. Yeah. Well, the concept I mean, I think... comes from chemistry. Because if you have a balance between alkaline and acid, then you get a neutral reaction. So this word comes out of science, chemistry, and because science was mostly formulated in Latin and Greek, therefore we have many terms in our language, like neutralität, neutrality coming from Latin. And this is a scientific term, but now we use it um, yeah, a bit beyond its real background. Because I like this word when, when you see it's rooted in, in chemistry as a balance between acid and alkaline. <laughs> then you have a real activity, a real battle first to overcome that there is no imbalance. And this you know, chemistry and alchemy has a lot to do with transformation processes in the soul. And when you balance out your sympathies and antipathies and create an inner calm, then you have a moral quality shaping neutrality. Yeah. Thank you. There are two more people. Thank you so much. Hello, in my group, we discussed that neutrality sometimes means do not have an opinion or do not speak out. But I think the neutrality is not do not having an opinion. I think our brain is always like a uh, in duality. And sometimes we are too dogmatic. This is good or this is bad. And for me, neutrality is really, really speaking out, but be really concentrated on the situation, on individual situation and bringing the inside light, what could be the balance word in this case and not always think what could be, which opinion should I have or just be really, really in the present and speak out what is in the middle is coming out from the heart. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny? So, yes, that's me. <laughs> um, I was, I was um, in a group, the first comment that was made was that it's really the balance between um, sympathy and antipathy. But I've been working with the Eightfold Path for many years. And I think that is actually the, the absolutely perfect guideline to neutrality. I mean, Steiner's Eightfold Path, yeah? Hey, friend. Yeah, thank you so much for saying that. I would say that's our work at Elderberries. We had the Buddha Eightfold Path and the daily exercises on the back of the menu. The menus disappeared so often. <laughs> like, you know, Elizabeth Roosevelt painted it on the wall and people would come in and uh, they would take pictures. So 